Okay, this is my next installment of my little video series, Building My Bear Hawk. You can see that I have the fuselage out of the jig, which is happy day. Went along smoothly, and now it's ready to be welded. Before I can do my welding, though, and weld comfortably in any position, I had to build a rotisserie for my fuselage. I basically went online and I borrowed a lot of good ideas that I saw at other, on other jigs, and basically compiled the ones that made sense to me and went ahead and put them into one design that I really like and seems to work really well. What I figured at first would be really important regardless of the weight differential between the top and the bottom because the bottom has more tubing was that I wanted to have it pivot around the center of the fuselage not necessarily the center line but the center of the fuselage from tail to tip. The reason for that is because when I rotate the fuselage I'll go ahead and rotate it here. I want it to be able to clear at the bottom with the same clearance I have at these different uh, structures so I can weld it in pretty much any position. And it really doesn't, it, does, it is heavier on the bottom but it's not so bad that you can't do anything about it. So I welded this and I, most of the support is done at the engine mounts. I figured if there's any torquing to be done at the fuselage the best place to put it is where you're going to have torque from the engine and that would be at the at the center point here or that at the firewall so that's what I did I went ahead and made the spider here that you can see at the fuselage I have this universal joint I got that off an old tractor that I had it's actually not a tractor it's an implement it's an old drive shaft it was all corroded uh, U joint was all frozen up I uh, beat it around with a hammer got it loosened got some grease in it and now it just pivots just fine and then I went ahead and made this whole structure out of scrap tubing that I had. There was also part of an old weight set I found at the dump. And if you can see uh, the universal where that connects, that allows me not only to move the fuselage up and down independent of the rear, but also allows it to pivot without putting any strain or stress on the fuselage itself. It'll just go ahead and flex and not impart any uh, stresses I can't see. If you look at the way this is attached to the top, there's a, it's about a one inch rod that runs through here. There's a plate that's welded on the end. This goes through and then the rod is held in place with this bolt. It's where the old shear plane went and that captures this whole thing. So I can move it anywhere I want and not have to worry about this slipping out. I've got two adjustable locking nuts on here welded a little quarter inch round stock to a couple of bolts and I did too so I get some extra gripping power I don't have to worry about it slipping and it doesn't have to be very tight I just put it on just a little bit and it holds it just fine and this is adjustable height adjustable and the reason that this uh, this works is because at the back it's completely free floating if you look at the back What I did was I put a couple rollers back here and a stinger with an old piece of pipe and just had a flange on it and then went ahead and welded that and that way I can rotate the front and I can raise and lower it as much as I want completely independent on the back and it'll just float back here. It just, it just rests by gravity right here and it spins free. And you can see the whole frame itself since I'm going to be moving it by myself is all welded together. I wanted to be able to move it anywhere I needed to in the shop without having any help and without having the front and the back connected it's kind of impossible to do that. Uh, two of the four wheels are locking so it'll help stabilize that as well and what I did was on the back I wanted to decide how to go ahead and, and keep this on here without indu inducing any torque in the back to try and make a free float so before I left it out of the jig or got out of the jig I went ahead and welded these the top and then welded this part. This is very heavy tubing because this is where the tail wheel spring transmits its part of its load to the tail post. And then I went ahead and clamped these here so that way I can rotate it and it's very strong here in this area and it's not going to impart any twisting torque into the laundrons itself. I figured that if I would clamp it at the top and clamp it at the bottom this of course will get cut off later. Uh, as I twist it it could potentially induce a little bit of a twist in the laundron, so that's why I kept it in the middle. As, once I, this is all finished welded, it doesn't matter. I can clamp it anywhere I want to. So that's my thinking on that. 
But all in all, I figure the fuselage rotisserie came out real well. Don't have any money into it other than the paint. All the rest of the stuff I had was just scrap that I had around the shop. It took a little bit to figure out what I wanted to do. But I'm really happy with the result. And as you can see, I can go ahead and I can just loosen these two nuts. Take the fuselage and just with one hand I can spin it to any position I want. I have to grab the camera here and hold it. And I can take and tighten these two. And that's it. I can move it anywhere I want to. Not have to worry about spinning it around without having a, an extra set of hands around. That's about it.